Right folks, so welcome back to another video. We're in the market at Golf R and we're going to be doing the first modifications today. As you know, it does look a bit soft in standard form. Well, this one does anyway. So I definitely need to address that before we get any further with tuning and all of that. So yeah, we've got a number of things on the agenda today, ranging from splitters, wheels, getting it detailed and also getting it lowered. We'll begin with that first and for that we're going to head over to our friends at Evolve Automotive. And yeah, just enjoy this packed video. Okay, so we've made it down to Evolve. I'm already inside. Let's hop out, have a look at it in its current state. Now I want you're gonna notice straight away in the back of the shot yes that is the e60 parked over there underneath this g80 now you may have noticed in the sort of oem plus mods video there was a bit of a noise coming from the front it was a power steer making some well there's a bit of chaos going on let's put it that way so it's been here for the last week we're just waiting on some parts yeah i'll save that for an e60 video yeah that's our current ride height the only kind of issue i got with these is that the car looks pretty soft as it does especially with these wheels they're quite pinched inwards and they're not really an aggressive design, but I have got a solution for that. Right, so these are very familiar. They're the wheels off the RS3, the new speed RSC 10s. They're 18 by 9 ET40. I've only got two with me today because I just want to test fit them and basically adjust the ride height accordingly. All right, so Aston, you've just spotted something. Yeah, how close that is. That? That's bound to get knocked off at some point. At, th at that point, they should have rotated the tire. Yeah. Because obviously when you're balancing the wheel, you balance the wheel to the tire, right? Yep. And at that point, there's a lot of weight to add there. That's, that's probably a 60 gram strip with another 15 grams. So you've got 75 grams of weight on there. It's a fair amount. Mm. I would mark the tire and rotate it. Yeah, so 5121 and this car's a, a 21 reg March car. So they're not the original set. So whoever did change them did a very, uh, not a great job. So uh, there we have our DCC shock absorber. It's still a Monroe part. My old Mark 7 GTI had DCC and that was also Monroe. I'm not too sure how similar the part numbers are, but yeah, we're gonna be changing just the springs out today. The combo should be pretty nice. Uh, we're not gonna go for a crazy drop, so it's all compressed. But definitely needs a bit of a jet wash, this thing. There's just muck everywhere. Deleafing this one as well. Yeah, you need to deleaf this one as well, man. This thing, they've left this whole area so open now that that Acon rad there is looking pretty battered for the mileage. So I wonder what that would look like after 50, 60k. It'd be pretty mullered. Look how open it is. Yeah, it's quite... There are quite big gaps in the, in the grill as well. Yeah. Might have to do one of them M140i Owners Club style mesh behind it. So you're getting all the valuable market information today rather than just being a shiny collection video. Right, Aston, so we've got the goods here. MSS. Goods. Now, I've gone for something a bit different this time. Usually I've always done the MSS Sport Kit. This is a track version. Uh, the spring rates are a bit different. Now we've got a few different things here. It's not just the case of it just being lowering springs. We've got the adjusters, so you can adjust your ride height accordingly. General MSS kind of usual setup with the front spring and the front adjuster. But on these ones, it's a bit different to the BMW where they sit this way and the adjuster sits at the top. Right. Most kits are that way around. Right. So it's slightly different, but it still does the same thing. Yep. And then, yeah, like you said on the rear, these are the track. And then obviously these have got the one spring rate and these have got the twin spring rate. Which is, so you've still got that three spring rate on the rear stack. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. And uh, yeah, you just swap them out for the uh, sport one for the different kits. Insulation is pretty straightforward. It's like any Lorig spring, you just got to account for the adjuster really. Account for the adjustment, yeah. Cool. So first thing is to unplug all these. So we disconnect that, get them all out of the way so there's no tension on it when you're moving it down. Yep. And then we will undo the pinch bolt in the back here. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera. Yep, got a pinch that. bolt for on through there, take that out, put the spreader tool in the hub so it gives it some, so it's nice and loose on the shock. And then we'll wiggle this hub down, lever it down out of the way, under the three nuts or bolts on the top of the Yep, we've got the top mount, top mount there. Yep. And get the damper assembly out. Oh, and also the um, drop link around the back here, we've got to take that off as well. Now, in terms of getting the shock out, we have encountered a situation here with the Mark 8, haven't we, Aston? Yeah, so basically, we moving it from the hub. Yeah. You can only get the hub down so far because of the travel of the lower arm. So we put these little spring clamps on, which are going to compress the spring and the, the damper together. Yep. And that will allow the damper to move up that little bit more just to get it out of the hub. Now, a quick disclaimer, we're not by any means recommending this method and saying it's the correct way to do it. We're well aware that it is pretty sketchy, but it's just what we opted to do in the moment. The correct way is to drop the drive shaft out on these things and get more maneuverability that way. We were actually close to not including it in the video, but I thought, no, let's leave it in because otherwise it contradicts my whole goal for this channel. I want to show you guys exactly what went down. And yeah, just in case one of you folks orders lowering springs and you're tempted to do it at home and you can't clear the wing and you're wondering why. Now the strut's basically just hanging off these yeah, 313s at the top. 
much easy going from here. Sorted. So because obviously we've clamped this in the car, yeah. the spring's now compressed. Yep. So that means we could take the top mount off without having to like take these off and put them into another spring compressor. Yeah, so you just pop that off. Take the bump stop out, which we're going to reuse with the MSS. That that we'll reuse as well. So all of that stuff gets reused. Right. And then it's just a case of releasing those and taking the spring off. Yep. So we've got the standard damper. We keep the standard rubber seat and then the spring sits on there. Yep. Like I was saying, this is a bit different to most of the kits, like especially the BMW where the adjuster sits at the bottom and this one sits at the top. Yep. So that sits like that. And then you've got to squeeze this through the adjuster. It takes a bit of persuasion. And then it's a case of just building back up what you've done in reverse. So yeah. bump stop back on over the top, over your top mount. Yeah, and we've got just enough thread just there enough to bite. Just enough thread to get the nut on there. The gap on the front here we left 15 mil. Yep. And then the gap on the back we've left 20 mil. Right. So if you want to go all the way down on these you put this front adjuster all the way down to the bottom and then the back adjuster you leave a 10 mil gap and right. that gives you a nice even level and it's the lowest position possible for the car it's a nice reassuring noise sounds like a golf <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a bit enough door shutting in this video for yeah. that saying like we just slam some doors see what the market's like a lot more room now on this one Oh, the spreader fell out again. Yeah, at this point it's pretty much a reverse of the rest of it once it's back in. Obviously seated properly, pinch bolt in and the rest of the stuff. But yeah, definitely if you are planning to lower your Mark 8R and you want to go for the MSS, definitely do give Evolve a shout. Just give them a call, uh, get the car booked in and get it sorted. There you go, dead on 70. Now I will say whoever owned this car previously definitely did enjoy it by the dirt all over the place and mud but interestingly we have got these covers now which i'm guessing help prevent the rust over the years but on that one we removed it and all of this it looks like it's from a build inside is that just concrete is this all still stuck on there or is that yeah see it'll all just clean up might do that whilst i'm here the rear suspension is just like any vw hatchback thing it's independent to the shock absorber right so whilst i was just detailing that with a bit of brake cleaner you've already been making a start on this side then aston yeah so we've got the bolt out for the bottom of the damper we've got the bolt out for the bottom of the hub i'm just going to take the drop link bolt out now Now, in addition to doing this, we still need to remove the dampers right on the rear because we want to fit these. Yeah, so we've got to take the um, original shocks out of the back and replace the bump stop that's in there with the one that MSS provide. Okay. And then at the minute, I'm just putting this sleeve over here, which is protection for the adjuster. So yeah. it stops all the dirt and stuff getting into the threads. Yeah. Uh, these are optional. They don't come with every kit, but obviously you've chosen to select these as an option. That is a rear DCC shock. It's like a missile, doesn't it? <laughs> now, I know with a lot of lowering spin kits, they just don't tend to change this out. And I'm not going for a full slam look, so arguably you could leave it alone, but MSS has provided this in the kit, so let's try and adhere to what they say. There we are. That's the factory bump stop. Okay. Significantly lower. Yeah, there is a big difference with that. It's basically half the size. Bit of a shadow there, but you can sort of figure out what's going on. Two bolts straight back in. Now the first set of springs are going in. Yep, so I put the black one in first, just so we'd have to try and balance the whole stack. And that is the main sort of track element of the spring, and there's a coupler in between, and the adjuster is at the top underneath there. Done 70 newton meters and 180 degrees. Previously with these wheels, I had a 265, 35, 18 setup on the RS3. The front's cleared just about, but the rears were very tight and ideally you do want to get more camber added in. You can normally get a replacement arm, there's a few aftermarket options, but I don't really want to do anything with this just yet. I do really like the Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sport. Very good tyre, gives you good feedback. These are the main tyre used on the M140i, even up to stage 3 level and they grip pretty well, so... I will give you folks a proper look at these all cleaned up with center caps and all that once we're back at home later in the video. But yeah, moment of truth, ride height. Hopefully they tuck in a bit. It's come down a bit.
do full lock to the left. Yeah, don't move, I'm gonna stick my hand in there, okay? Yeah, uh, the other way. Yeah, that's perfect. The front's okay. The back is basically looking like stock, so we will have to adjust that. Now what I'll do, we'll cut back to the clips at home where we're gonna fit a few other parts in the car, like the splitter and side skirts. I don't know if I've mentioned it already. Big thanks to the main man, Aston, as always. It's a pleasure and I will be back in a few weeks or whenever the new parts arrive for the E60 and we'll get that content done. This is the ride height we ended up settling on, no pun intended. I think it's pretty much perfect. We left the fronts alone from the last clip, so that'll be fine. Now over here, we've got a front splitter and some side skirts from Maxton. Ordinarily, I've not really been a fan of their stuff, I'll be honest, but yeah, this one is a bit more subtle than their usual stuff. Normally it's all just aggressive and sticking out, and, but this should just highlight the rest of the gloss pack bits on the front. Now, as I mentioned already, this is a non-performance pack, so it doesn't have the fancy rear wing, which I do feel it really does need. It's quite subtle and it doesn't, it doesn't really look like an R. You've got these crazy exhaust tips, but then, the rest of it almost just looks like it's slanted forward unlike the older Golfs. And the spoiler almost just balances out and brings it a bit more further back. Now you can retrofit the performance pack spoiler to this. All you need to do is basically open the boot lid, remove these trims here, unbolt it fully, and then this whole panel basically just comes off rather than it just being stuck on top. However, finding one of those is a different matter entirely. You can either get one used, which is gonna be very hard because it requires someone to either be breaking an R performance pack for parts and not have the rear end fully destroyed or a club sport being broken for parts. It's the same wing or you can buy one brand new and the worst bit of it, all the price, it's over a thousand pounds and they're still on back order. I've decided to go for something else in the meantime, which will do the job. It's this, it's an auto ID club sport style spoiler. I'll just gently place this down here to give you an idea of what it looks like. So the design is pretty much exactly the same. It just sits on top as I mentioned. I have seen some people with this replica style wing paint this in a bit so it matches with the body color like the original spoiler. Well honestly it's not bad and the best thing about it, it only costs around 100 pounds. Now there's a few different ways of putting this on. I remember with the Mark 7 spoilers like the Ottinger product etc people used to just bond them on. I'm gonna just go with some 3M tape. I've done something a bit different here. I've got the big roll so I can just cut it to shape and it's a lot wider. Now you don't want to put it completely flush apparently otherwise it will touch the sort of edge of the boot lid when it opens so I'm gonna have to just freestyle it I guess about there now I don't know about you folks but I think that looks way better now the car just seems a bit more like an R let's say maybe at a later date if I can find the genuine part at a reasonable price I'll put it on but that's plenty that is right so now that the spoiler's done we'll move on to the side skirts these are relatively easy to install hopefully you can see that there the sunlight's a bit strange in the morning over here with all these trees the part where it curves out there slightly is the same as where that does that bit on the oe side skirt so it should look okay now they don't actually give you any predetermined places where you ought to drill they say to use 10 of these self-tapping screws you could actually just drill them or sorry screw them straight into the car but yeah, I'd rather get them started with a smaller drill bit. So I've got a three millimeter bit on there. Now you may be wondering why I didn't just do all of this when it was that Evolve on the ramp getting the springs fitted. Simple answer to that is I like doing home DIY and filming it this way. We are ready to go now with this. It's been drilled, tapes ready. Right, so the hardest part of the whole thing, make sure you are thoroughly cleaned underneath here. Otherwise it'll, yeah, you don't want dirt stuck in between this and the car. Line it up. Now these are what the supplied self-tappers look like. They've got an eight millimeter head. So I'm gonna use my impact gun to drive them into the holes I've created on the side skirt. And there we are, sometime later, I've done both sides. It does flow pretty decently with the original side skirt. Probably a bit more creative than what I usually get, but it'll do the job. Now with the spoiler and the roof open, that's definitely a good look. All I need to do now is the front splitter to finish it off. Now for the front splitter, I do recommend taking the bumper off. So that's what we're gonna be doing. This is the V5 splitter. They've got so many different ones and some of them are far too aggressive. First time the market is going on the quick jacks. Only drawback is I couldn't use them for the side skirts because they cover the whole area, but for the rest of it, it's fine. giving me Mark 7 throwbacks this. Okay, bumper removal time, first things first. 
Just remembered, I still haven't bought the gas strut yet. I'm gonna remove this grill first. They've moved the sensor into the badge now, so I've gotta be careful not to ruin the wires behind it. Got T25s here, all very clean. Time to remove, I was gonna say leaves, but this is not a leaf. Now the under tray looks identical to the Mark 7, so we've got all of these torque screws, the interlocks in the front here. And we've got some on the edges as well going into the bumper. So I'm going to remove all of these. Okay, a little change of plan here. I'm going to go against my own advice and leave the bumper on. Reason being, I'm just taking a few screws out of here and it's still quite sort of, well, there's probably something else holding it on. It's easy enough to do, but I don't fancy risking scratching this when putting it back on. And I quite like how nice this car is at the minute. But I have come up with a little solution. I'm going to mount that up now with some tape on top of the protective cover so we can get a good sort of gist of where it's going to sit. With that arch liner being out and the under tray being off, I can actually get full access in there. Now you can see my hand just there. So different hardware to the side skirts. You've got Allen head bolts, washers, and then also a nut on the other side. Follows the uh, lines in the car pretty well, this splitter. Okay, so I've drilled where I need to drill. We can take this protective cover off. Right, it looks like I can get a ratchet in there. Okay, so the split is done. I am going to keep an eye on it just to make sure it's not loose. It does feel pretty rigid, but you can never be too certain. The bumper is going to come off soon for some other mods I've got planned for the car, but yeah, look at that, much better. All we need to do now is put those on, the finishing touch. Oh, this is going to look so good. I think it's safe to say we've definitely transformed it. I don't even know what to say, folks. It's just totally different how it was at the start. Completely different. I just knew from looking at the standard car that there was a lot of potential and it's definitely all been realized. 18 seem to be sitting perfectly. It's got this sort of wedge shape. So coming from there on the splitter all the way up to the sort of kickback on that. That is unreal. So much more aggressive. It actually looks like an R now. Now, unfortunately the splitter was pretty short lived. It scraped even leaving my driveway at home and also scraped a number of speed bumps, etc. So it seems I miscalculated how low it would be. But I guess at least it was nice whilst it lasted. Right, and on to our final part of the video. We're down at Midlands Car Care. Some of you long-time viewers will remember this place. We came here for the R32 and also on the white RS3 to get it PPF'd and detailed. So yeah, we're gonna meet up with Russ again, do some bits of the Mark AR and make it look a bit nicer. Right, so golf is in. Nice little cleaning montage to start things off. We're back again with Russ from Midlands Car Care and also Rai from Pyramid Car Care as well. Now we're gonna do a little walk around first to show all the imperfections as usual. Um, hopefully it's not as bad as the R32 as last time. Uh, it's, it's, this one hasn't turned pink yet. Yeah. Um, 
So yes, yeah, so it's been washed, decontaminated, so the tiles have been removed, the uh, fallout has been removed, and we've clayed it, it's all mm. dried, so now we're just inspecting the paintwork for any defects, mm -hmm. which we'll then fix with a machine polisher, and then obviously we'll put a, a coating on to keep it protected. But Perfect. Yeah, if, if Ryan wants to show you some yeah. of the bad bits here. Most cars that have been washed a few times and washed incorrectly, on the sides you'll see a lot of this sort of stuff going on. So it yeah. almost looks like a like a cobweb or very very light scratching. It's what we call swirling or marring yep. within the industry. And this is just very light surface scratching. So what this is is poor wash technique, poor drying, and general just wear and tear really. So it happens to pretty much everything. So mm -hmm. we'll go around with the machine polisher. We'll remove this out uh, as best we can. There are a few deeper marks here and there. Mm -hmm. Looks like potentially a, a dog or something that's jumped up on the door. Yeah. And um, we'll try and get all those out for you. Uh, and then go ahead and put a coating on. We'll do a bit of a 50-50, just to show you a bit of a before and after of what we can achieve. Yeah, so we've got a five year coating, so a ceramic coating pro. Mm -hmm. So we've designed the product to be super easy to apply. So we have a lot of mobile detailers using it, yep. um, but also good enough for the unit guys too. And then we've got our carbon glass coating. It's like Rain-X on steroids, basically. Mm -hmm. um, that one goes on the windscreen side windows and you get about six to 12 months durability out of that particular product. Now, I'll be honest, folks, I'm not too clued up on a lot of the detailing techniques is all sort of alien to me to an extent. I can understand bits about an engine, etc. but a lot of the products, I normally just leave it to the professionals, which we've got here in front of us. So I think the best way to do this is we'll insert another montage. Right, okay, so the polishing's all done. Pretty interesting to watch there. It was like an F1 pit stop, but with a, <laughs> a golf instead. <laughs> so not quite as glamorous. But yeah, the next stage is to do the coating, right? Yeah, sure. So, um, got our five year pro coating. Yep. Uh, super, super easy to apply. So I'll, I'll show you the application process on, on this quarter here. A few drops on there. Just nice, e even coverage. It's very therapeutic to watch this. <laughs> This is, this is the easy bit. <laughs> so for those who are not too clued up on detailing and the various aspects about it, what are the benefits of coating a vehicle? So it makes it super easy to maintain and keep clean. Uh, that's probably the number one benefit. Uh, mm -hmm. It does offer an element of scratch resistance as well. So yeah. in regards to the wash marring and the bits we've taken out with the polishing, it will help to protect against that. Uh, it's not bulletproof, but it will, yeah. will help to protect it. I don't know if you can hear the squeak yeah, on yeah. the camera, but if you get the cloth and just... Uh, is that a rub how slick the surface feels yeah that feels totally different that does yeah you can tell there's something applied there it's so, an interesting one that and then it's literally 20 minutes before it can go outside four hours before it can get wet right okay and then about a week before you wash the car and okay. the first time you come to wash it it just beads water like crazy check this resident that's come out to you say hello on this freshly polished golf ball. No, it looks absolutely stunning, this is. Ignore the fact that I've got three center caps, folks, but <laughs> um, really does show that you can improve an already new car. Now, before we end things, I'll give you a fancy montage of the completed product. I just want to mention a few things. So, Midlands Car Care, for those of you who have not seen the previous video, you're based in Warsaw, right? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna leave the Instagram down below in the description. Um, if you need any PPF detail and stuff like this, give you a shout. Yeah, exactly, on Instagram, I'll date it and then we'll, we'll get back to people. Perfect, yeah. Cool, enjoy this, and uh, yeah, let's continue. car okay so back at home now i'll just give you guys a quick look at the car in its familiar surroundings after being detailed yeah that definitely is something even though there's quite a bit of shade here opf doing its warm-up thing isn't a single swirl on there very nice tire dressing i mean for those of you who didn't really like the market golf R, maybe this has swayed your opinion 
This looks so much more futuristic. Yeah, proper stuff. Yeah, we'll end the video here. I reckon it's pretty long enough already. It's probably well over 30 minutes considering I've been filming for about a week now. But I do enjoy this and I've been noticing you guys prefer this more broader sort of transformation topic of video. But let me know in the comments regardless and drop a like if you did enjoy it. So quickly to wrap up, we did the suspension, we did the wheels, we did the split and side skirts. That could just be body kits, that's three things. Spoiler and then the detailing. So five things to get the car transformed from where it started from. All you need to do now is get some more power. So that will be the next video going stage one. Make sure you are subscribed for that and also follow me on Instagram as well. Should be on the screen, it's trhamza underscore. But yeah, I'll leave you to your folks and I'll see you in a few days time.